It's the Friday Night Frenzy on News 18. Sports from where you live. Thank you so much for sticking around. I'm your host, Bree Shockford, and welcome to week 14 of the Friday Night Frenzy, or Mini Frenzy, as I like to call it. We have four games across three different sports, all for you on our lineup. And first, we're going to take a look at the Boilermakers, who were in action for their last home game. Boilermakers were taking on the Michigan Wolverines. It was senior day in Holloway, and Purdue honored five seniors in Ava Torrance, Maddie Chin, Maddie Shermahorn, Emma Ellis, and Madeline Coach. Let's see how tonight's game went. Boilers were on fire at the net tonight. Wolverines kept it neck and neck, but Purdue's outside hairs looked unstoppable. Emma Ellis and Eva Hudson were both all over the ball and the net. Ellis racked up 11 kills and Hudson 15. Libero, Maddie Shermahorn also has a stellar game tonight with 22 digs. Boilers took the first set 25-23, but Michigan would turn that score around and take the second set 25-23 themselves. Third set, Hudson would seal the deal with a kill and win the third set 25-21. Then the Boilers would go on and take the fourth set and yet another close one 25-22. Purdue Volleyball wins its last home game of the season 3-1. Switching gears to the Hardwood, high school girls basketball is back in action with the girls IU Health Hoops Classic. Harrison taking on McCutcheon in the semifinal round. First quarter, Harrison going to start things off hot out the gate. Some good perimeter passing leads to the Raiders find Riley Whitlock in the middle who muscles her way up for two under the basket. Raiders strike first, but McCutcheon will answer right back. Ball finds the hands of Mallory Butel outside the arc and she pulls up and drains the much needed three for her team. But the Mavs still trail, and with the defense the Raiders had tonight, they wouldn't be able to put up many more points. It's Riley Flynn with the steal and breakaway. She goes up, it's no good, but don't worry because Essel Anhart is there to clean things up again. Raiders would, would protect their home and win the semifinal matchup. Final score, Harrison wins 54-24, and they move on to the championship tomorrow night. And the second semifinal game took place at Lafayette Jeff as well. Central Catholic taking on Twin Lakes. Winner will face Harrison in the championship for all the marbles. Starting off in the first, he sees Tori Thompson drives to the basket, but Cora Pass says, not in my house. Hands it to Addison Bozeman, who drives up the court, pulls up for three and drains it. And yeah, she's pretty pumped after that. Later, Bozeman is driving again, and she passes it to Olivia Nickerson, and the junior knocks down another tray for the Indians. Knights coach Craig DeVault telling his team it's time to step it up, and step it up they do. Kendall Ryder passes down low to Lizzie Cochran, who says thank you very much with that layup. And there's more where that came from. A few plays later, Carly Barrett motors down the lane for the bucket and the foul. Knights inching closer, but not close enough in the end. Indians moved the ball well and came out on top. Final score, Twin Lakes wins 50-40. Twin Lakes moves on to the title game tomorrow night at McCutcheon, where they will face Harrison. Now, isn't frenzy fun? The fact that we get to talk about winter sports while fall sports are still going on will never not excite me. And speaking of fall sports, one of our high school football teams was in action tonight, battling it out for a chance to get to state. That's right, folks, it's the Red Devils of West Lafayette, and this game was a very good game, if I do say so myself, but it was also pretty cold. Sports 18's Kelly Howell then joins us with a look at what all went down in the Class 3A Semi-State Championship. Kelly? West Lafayette is one win away from a date at Lucas Oil Stadium for the state championship. Red Devils are going up against a tough Bishop Chatar team that already has 15 state titles under their belt. Let's see if West Lafayette can continue their perfect season tonight. Red Devils take their home field for the semi-state championship, and it definitely felt like football in November. Chittard quarterback Drew Van Vliet gets to work early. He throws it deep, 31 yards to Noah Duddick, who makes a nice catch. Trojans in scoring position. Van Vliet decides to take it himself and runs 16 yards for the touchdown. Chittard goes up 7-0 in the first quarter. Max Mullis and the Red Devils looking to answer, but Mullis' throw is intercepted by the Trojans. Chatard gets back to work. Aiden Duncan with an eight-yard run for the Trojans. You can see this play faked me out. Duncan gets into the end zone for six more points. Chatard leads 14-0 in the second quarter. West Lafayette forces a fumble and jumps on the ball to get it back for another chance to score as time is winding down in the second quarter. 
Max Mullis finds Nate Myers, who gets the Red Devils in scoring position. But West Lafayette has to settle for a field goal. Chatard leads 14-3 at the half. Third quarter, Max Mullis is picked off again by the Trojans, and Bishop Chatard gets into the end zone for the third time of the night. Drew Van Vliet with a 25-yard pass to Colin Guy, who scores. Trojans lead 21-3 in the third quarter. West Lafayette is not able to get into the end zone all night. Chatard had a stellar defensive performance, forcing the Red Devils offense to commit several crucial turnovers. Red Devils fall in the semi-state championship 21-3. You know, our kids have dealt with adversity all year long. Uh, they work really hard. They want to be the best they can possibly be. Um, we lost a lot of kids with injuries throughout the year, and we returned two out of eight kids up front for this season, and, and the new guys, we had no idea. Um, boy, and they, sh they showed us what they could do, and it, it's been a great year for us. It's, it's tough to say goodbye, because uh, Friday night lights, they don't come back, so it's tough. It was a hard-fought game. Congrats to the Red Devils on a great season. Bishop Chatard will move on to play in the Class 3A state championship game at Lucas Oil Stadium next Saturday at 3 p.m. Reporting from West Lafayette, Kelly Hallinan, Sports 18. Thank you so much, Kelly, and I hope you stayed warm. Well, from high school ball to college ball, we are officially at the tail end of the college football season. And this is a big weekend for many teams in the Big West, especially Purdue. Now, if the Boilermakers manage to win these next two games and Iowa comes up with a loss as well, then the team will win out the Big Ten West and head to the Big Ten Championship. But first things first, they got to beat the Northwestern Wildcats, which is something the Boilers haven't done at Ross Aid since 2007. Looking at the opponent, Northwestern has only won one game this year so far, and they've recorded 10 touchdowns and 662 total tackles. But it's Purdue's senior day on Saturday, and it's the last time many players will be playing in ross -A. So the stakes are high for a win, and the Boilers know what they need to do in order to come out victorious. We've got a lot of guys that have been here a long time. Uh, and done a great job for us and been good teammates and helped uh, this program uh, hopefully become better. And, uh, they care. And so when their families come in, uh, we, they deserve for us to play our best. And that means um, you know, coming ready to play, being focused, uh, you know, doing all the small things correctly, playing to the end and finding a way to win. Kickoff is set for tomorrow at noon, and we'll have all the highlights on News 18. And it looks like that will do it for our Friday Night Frenzy mini show. Thank you so much for sticking around that entire time, and congrats to the West Lafayette Red Devils on such an incredible season. We are all so proud of you here at WLFI. Now make sure to visit our website, WLFI.com, and click on the Sports tab for scores and highlights from tonight's matchups. We hope you have a good night and a happy holiday next week.